Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikawa said that way too fast. I'm also known as Shikawa Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. And um, at the time of filming this, I am literally one week out from my final competition of the year after 40 weeks of dieting. It's been a long old journey, but we're coming to the end. And I feel like I need another 40 weeks and I can't wait for it to be over at the same time. If you're curious to see about all of that, I do upload um, like check-in shorts, reels, whatever you want to call it. If you want to see what my body looks like. And also I do vlogs, so check those out as well. In fact, I'm filming a full day of eating today, which you might see this video before or after. I'm not so sure yet because I'm pre-recording content right now. Today, talking of weight loss journeys, we are going to be looking at Beatrice Caruso. I know. It's a controversial topic because Beatrice is a very liked person and I too like Bea. I am subscribed and I used to be quite a fan of her. Actually, I liked her honest approach, but I'm going to have to be honest. She started off in the beginning of the year. She did say she wanted to focus on weight loss. She wants to be held accountable, etc, etc, etc. And I feel like Beatrice is kind of like um, a bit like April Lauren. She, yes, she's almost about her mental health. Yes, she seeks help for her mental health, etc. Et but Beatrice doesn't work. Her job is YouTube. She uploads maybe like one to two, one video a week, if even that. She will go AWOL sometimes for weeks on end without really notifying her audience, which is kind of rude, in my opinion. I don't like it when people just, you know, take their audience for granted like that. Um, so her job is to lose weight, basically. She doesn't really do anything else besides uploading videos here and there. And she seems to only upload whenever she does a sponsorship. Now, I haven't checked in with her for a while. So for all I know, for the last couple of months that I haven't looked at her, she's lost a lot of weight. But she's saying getting my groove back, weight loss, health and fitness. So it looks like she hasn't really made any progress. And like, let's be real. She's been doing this kind of content for several years now. And really, she's not made any progress or very little. So... Just because she is good at editing, she has a nice personality, she puts herself out there in a positive manner, she's more honest, she's not really putting in the work, is she? And that's kind of, you know, and the more I watch of her content, the more I feel like she just basically does videos for sponsorships and to make a quick buck. She makes, she makes, she gets very good views. Like I said, she doesn't have a full-time job, she doesn't really do anything else, so... She should be a lot more successful at weight loss than what she is. She's in a very privileged, privileged position to do what she does. Uh, so weight loss should kind of be her priority, basically. But let's get into the video. For all I know, she's lost 50 pounds. And I'm talking shit. Hey, Rose. But I don't think she's made much progress at all. I think she's probably pretty much the same weight that she has been this entire year. Which makes me wonder, like, you know, I know mental health is a thing. Obviously, everybody that's obese has mental health problems. But... If she's been working with a psychologist, psychiatrist, or whatever, therapist, as well as she gets all of these um, meal plan services, etc., 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 why is there not more results? You know, she is, you know, at some point, it doesn't really matter how nice you are or how great your content is edited. The reality is, is that, are you really trying? Are you really trying? I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. So, yeah, let's see if she really is trying or not. I woke up this morning with a little bit of pep in my step. So I mean, from the, stop it, please. I mean, from the beginning, it doesn't look like she has lost much weight at all. Looking at her, like you know, hey. 20, 30 pounds is very visible on most people. Um, hey, Rosie, I know we're gonna go in a second, sweetie. It's a bit early still. Mm -hmm. Go on, go play with your sister. Uh. She, my my Rosie is in a little mood today. Yes. Some wiggle in my walk, some juice in my caboose. That one's nasty, let's not use that one. The timing happens to be just before a string of holidays known for overindulgence and notorious for knocking me off track, but I don't know why. A switch has flipped from apathetic to hopeful and we are gonna duct tape that mother to the wall so it doesn't go back to the apathy because it is high time that I get my group back. 
Now you may be wondering to yourself, B, why are you sitting here in your skivvies coming at us with that much energy right now? Well, it's because I have to take some before pictures, measure my giblets, and weigh in. All the expense of Stevie, who's sleeping in at the weekend, but the only blank wall in the house happens to be in the bedroom. Uh, that has decent lighting anyway. So we're all gonna have to make some sacrifices. So, well, so she hasn't basically been doing any weight loss stuff for months, is what she's saying, right? But why not though? It's not like she has anything else to do. She doesn't have a job. It's today, but it's like 9.30, so he should be fine. I am a little bit apprehensive to waste this momentum because if you don't get going, it kind of just doesn't go, you know? So I want to get that baseline data in, have it done that. Stop it, please. Right, do you want to come for a cuddle? You want to come for a cuddle? in a long time don't really know where I'm at but it'll just be nice to see like where we're starting that's a playful growling by the way she's been playful she wants to go out but it's too early still she needs to wait half an hour it's pitch black and I like seeing that change in various forms it just gives you that little hit of dopamine you know what I mean Stevie, I don't know if you heard me talking to myself in the other room but I've come to disturb your slumber by taking pictures of myself in my underwear <laughs> He's glaring at me. <laughs> Cover your eyes, I need to open the windows for some lighting. Cover your little peepers. I'm sorry. Okay, we gotta set all this up. Come here, little buddy. You want Charles? Yeah, so she has literally lost no weight whatsoever, pretty much, from the last time I've seen her. Your friend? Here you go. <laughs> Charles. Never did this in front of another person before. Okay, is that recording? No, I do believe in measuring yourself because it's very easy to get fixated on the scale weight. Um, which is not always indicative of what's going on, especially if you're weight training. Sometimes the, the weight on the scale might not change an awful lot, but you, you know, you're, you're changing body composition. Uh, obviously at some point, especially when you're obese, the scale weight will go down, but there could be periods where you're kind of stagnating. And if you're measuring yourself, at least you can see that if you're losing size, but the weight stays the same, you're losing fat and that is what matters. So focus on fat loss and not on a scale weight loss. Well, both should matter, but... Fat loss is more important and that's measurable through, well, measuring. <laughs> I'm not really sure about this measurement, which is shoulders. I'm doing several points on my belly because that's like my biggest problem area. So I'm doing like under the bust, natural waist. Yeah, so she's kind of like squeezing. She's squeezing that in too much to hold on. No. Belly button. Oh, that was part of the no, belly. Look, she's squeezing that in weight. So you're not supposed to squeeze it inside. And then butt, just you know. And I don't think that I do measurements like the way that you're supposed to, but if you're just consistent and do what works for you, then it's fine. Yeah, this is true. So normally speaking for measurements, uh, I don't I don't do it because like I'm quite low body fat, so I don't need to. But for the waist, they recommend that what you would do is like you stand up and you tilt to the side and where the body pivots, you measure there. So around here, just above the belly button, um, I would say, measure here across the hips and measure across the widest part of the glute and also the widest part of the inside thigh sorry my, my pants are dirty from tanning um and then obviously you can do like a bicep flex as well like measure the bicep that's, that's those are pretty good points of measurement but for women we tend to usually carry most of our fat in the stomach so i will do above the belly button maybe if uh across the hips and across the widest part of the glute and the the thickest part of the thigh Okay, it's the afternoon now. Got a little bit caught up helping my mom and stepdad move a freezer from my grandma's house to their house and the flow got disrupted. But here we are in the garage gym. I am about to start a co-pilot workout. I have not gotten to one in a bit. Don't tell me she's doing this co-pilot shit as well. For real. Like, I do feel like, I'm sorry, but this is becoming, like, she really just uploads for fucking ads now as well and uh, for sponsorship. There's, and there's nothing wrong with it. I would love to have some sponsors too, don't get me wrong. Pay me an extra $500 to do a video, why not? I understand it. But, clearly these co-pilot workouts are not working, are they? You know? 
She's been doing them, Anna's been doing them, all of these obese weight loss channels have been doing them, and none of them are making any fucking progress in terms of either their form, their strength, or their, their physical development. So, Copilot, clearly, it's not, it's not as good as what it seems, because why are these people not changing? I mean, obviously their diet isn't great, but, yeah, from what I've seen from Copilot, it's kind of like, um, maybe okay to get started, but really, if you really, if you are really dedicated to success, you need to have a proper workout plan. Ideally, you need to be working out in a the gym. There needs to be resistance. Um, and also, it's not like her or Anna can't afford to work with an actual personal trainer, a strength and conditioning coach, somebody that does that for a living. A co-pilot app? Why? Why? If you're, if you're really dead, like, let's, let's be real. These people make a lot of fucking money doing YouTube and other social media. Why not spend a few hundred bucks a month on a personal trainer to have actual workout sessions with, as well as somebody that like does meal planning for you? They can easily do that and be successful, but no, no. Instead, we'll do videos and, you know, pretend to work on our weight loss. It because of the back injury, but I came in here <laughs> and I had forgot that I had gotten a new piece of gym equipment before my back went out. And the remnants of that experience are still here. So I'm gonna have to take this box out of there, but also I'll show you like the new thing that I got. Okay. It's like a, an app thing and a glute, glute ham raise. So this thing is awesome because, hold on, let me get my ass in here. So this machine is called a Teeter Dexy, and basically you can just, um, it's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a milder version of an inversion table, you know, instead of like flipping all the way upside down. Inversion tables are very good, by the way. Like, I used to ha have one, um, and they are very good for decompressing the spine. You're just like falling over at the hip point, like this. can't talk upside down. It's just like decompressing your spine. But also, what I like about this is you can do, I think I need to like adjust it better to where it like fits my body, but like these things. Back extension? Is that what that is? Yeah, it's a hyper extension. Depending on how you do it, you can focus your glutes, your, your lower back, or your hamstrings. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure Grace, who's my co-pilot coach, will have like all kinds of different things that will be available on here. Like that's also the good thing <laughs> is anytime I upgrade my gym equipment or like have less equipment available, I just let her know my situation and she makes the workout for me. So I don't even gonna really think about it and she helps with like proper form and whatever else. Yeah, we've seen the proper form with Anna. They do a very good job of that. The form is outstanding. So good job co-pilot and being you. <laughs> but for now, let's move this thing out of the way and we'll actually do a co-pilot workout. <laughs> It says, walk high incline. This is not an incline or a high incline at all. And please, if you walk on an incline, if you're that person, I'm that person, I walk on inclines. But if you can't walk on an incline without holding on, drop the incline and drop your speed. If you're walking at a 15% incline and you're going very fast, but you're holding on to the thing, it literally defeats the whole point of creating an incline. Drop the incline, drop the speed. Use your use your actual force in your legs, the muscles in your legs to propel yourself forward. If you're just hanging, you are basically like negating gravity. So if you're gonna do incline walking, don't hold on to the to the handles. I mean, like, look, the thing is, is that how long has Beatrice has been doing home workouts, etc. for quite, quite some time now? A 20 pound dumbbell, when you're trying to really progress and build muscle and make changes for 15 reps, it's not, it's not gonna do anything. You need to start somewhere, and when you're completely new, I get it, but she's been doing this for years now. 10 pound dumbbells, 
is going to do fuck all. Like, for real, for real. He needs some more resistance. She's got a barbell there. Why is she not doing sumo deadlifts? She can easily, like, she's big enough and strong enough to easily do sumo deadlifts with, like, get some small Olympic plates with, like, 40 kilos, which is, like, what, 80 pounds. 20 pounds is, like, pointless. <laughs> also, the form is not very good. She's leaning forward too much. And what I don't like about this co-pilot, it's all kind of all over, it's, it's, it's weird circuit training, it's all time-based. It's not like, oh, we're training shoulders today, or we're doing push, we're doing pull, we're doing legs. No, it's kind of like a bit of everything, and I'm not a big fan of training like that. Especially in terms of like, well, building, bodybuilding. And, I mean, in terms of building, changing body composition. You don't have to be on stage to be a bodybuilder. Anybody that's in the gym training is a bodybuilder, in my opinion. <laughs> So this this workout was what some some sit ups and uh, some body some sumo squats, great workout. This lasted what a whole fifteen minutes. Yeah, this is. I'm not gonna say it's pointless because some workout is better than none, but if you just do some sit ups and crunches and like some body weight squats or well pretty much body weight squats, it's not really gonna do anything, is it? Feels good to sweat, feels good to be back in it. I was struggling, I don't know if it's just because I haven't done anything other than like walking <laughs> because of the back injury or the fact that I ate before I worked out, which I don't normally do because it makes me feel bogged down and slow and just like I'm gonna throw up. I was definitely struggling, but I feel good now. It also depends on what you eat. If, you, if you're having a big meal, then yeah, it's gonna slow you down. But if you eat like a, an easy digestible carb, or you're just eating some light protein, you should be fine to work out, to eat before you work out. But I normally eat about 45 minutes to an hour before I work out. Ideally, cream of rice is the way to go. But it digests it very easily. Now, so that's all that matters. All right, I guess I'm finally ready to shower and get ready for the day, even though it's afternoon. My Instacart order just came. I got a metric shit ton of fruit and veg. So like she's it all great, perfect. This is the kind of stuff you, I want to see from a, a food shopping haul. Um, all whole foods, a variety of colors, lean proteins, etc. Now if she's eating like this, why the fuck is she not losing weight? I, I, I know I'm being a bit snarky. Um, but I have one week out from a show and I have been dieting for 40 weeks and I have been hungry a lot. So my point is, it's like she's got the money, the resources to spend all this money on all of this lovely fresh produce why is she not making progress in her weight loss? What else is she eating? Clearly, a lot of other shit that she shouldn't. And I am going to take the time to do something that I call mild meal prep. Now, this probably isn't a new concept. Someone has probably come up with it before, but the idea is not to like fully meal prep. It's like just to prepare some of the ingredients ahead of time. So you don't have to sit there and like plan the meal. You know what I mean? But like, you mean just meal prepping, right? So for example, what I do is like, I'll cook up like a bunch of rice because I eat rice every day. Rather than cooking every rice portion from scratch, I'll cook up a bunch of chicken because I eat chicken every day. I will cook up certain things. I'll have certain things ready because I eat them every single day and I can just go into the fridge and pick them. It's meal prepping, yeah. If I sit here and I have chopped up onions already, I'm more likely to throw those in a pan. If I have that stuff on hand, it just takes a little bit of the workout. Uh, we're talking about chopping up onions, all right. This is like, I feel like if she's doing things like, well, you know, I'm not going to cook because I don't have chopped up onions because I can't be bothered to chop an onion. Are you really that dedicated to your weight loss? Eat your fucking meal without chopped up onions, isn't it? You know, if you really want to lose weight, you'll just make your meal with or without the fucking onions. I'm sorry, but what is this for an excuse? So she's saying she's more likely to fail because she doesn't have chopped up onions ready. Ahead of time so that's kind of what i'm thinking and i thought she meant literally like bulk cooking up her protein and her carbs and etc i didn't think she meant like chopping up onions so if things are cleaned and cut and ready to go it just makes you more likely to eat them i would eventually like i disagree because like that should make a difference what's gonna make you more ready to eat them if it's already cooked up and ready to go Cutting up your veggies is not as important as making sure that you've got your protein ready to go when you're hungry. Because you still need to cook it then, right? You need to cook up your proteins and your carbs, not your veggies. To get to the point where I'm at least planning dinners. And then if I like cut bell pepper or chicken or something ahead of time and have it ready to go in the orientation that it 
is needed for the recipe, then that would be great. But we're just gonna do what we can at this point. So let's get to cleaning and prepping. We can't, we're just gonna do what we can at this point. Well, because you're so busy doing what? <laughs> Unless she's come back to work and I don't know about it. But from what I understand, she doesn't work. So what else is there to do in your day besides meal prepping? And if it was something that I'm gonna stick to, I guess we'll see much. What I just did, I like I have been chopping. So I've just got through a little B-roll of her chopping. Uh, video is down below if you want to watch it in full. For hours. Because I have been. It's admittedly a little bit much, what I just did. I don't know necessarily if it's something that I'm going to stick to. I guess The thing, well, probably not now. What's the point of like chopping up like literally five days worth of vegetables and stuff like that? It's also going to get weird. When you cut a vegetable up, it only stays good for like a day or two. Otherwise, it's going to get weird around the edges. So a lot of this, I guess, is going to go into the bin now. I guess we'll see how much time it saves me in the week. And if it was worth the marathon of cutting I just did. Time will tell. But on a side note, uh, when you order your groceries and have someone else shop for you, you're at the mercy of that person's produce picking abilities. Um, and sometimes you get someone who is like fantastic. Like they know how to pick a Yeah, this is literally why I don't like to order online. And then I never have done. I like to look at the produce myself and touch it and smell it and investigate it. Watermelon, how to pick a cantaloupe. You know, they pick everything that's fresh and ready to go. Like they care, you know what I mean? And other times you get someone who seems like they were trying to find the most rotted piece of fruit on the shelf. This person wasn't that bad, but they did make a couple of questionable decisions as far as produce goes, but. And again, why, why did she not go out herself to do it? She, from what I understand, she doesn't have a job. Why not go out, get some fucking steps in <laughs> and do some food shopping? It's very bizarre to me to like basically be unemployed, upload one video a week, and to not just get your own food shopping. I don't know. That made picking what to have for dinner easy because that broccoli is about to turn bad. So it has to be eaten pretty much immediately. So I am going to make some kind of Asian style like beef and broccoli thing. I used to make it a lot and that recipe got lost. No idea where it went. I think I just like committed it to memory and then didn't revisit it, which is why the recipe box is a good idea. But now I found a recipe that I think is similar. So I'm gonna try that one out. And if it ends up tasting like how I remembered, that's going in the box. So many recipes, tried and forgotten, lost to the ethers of the internet. I'm honestly not super hungry because I have been sampling a menagerie of vegetables, like probably a whole salad's worth. Like, cause I was cutting them, gotta taste them as well, I guess, I don't know. So maybe that's an upside too. I mean, if she's just like, every time she's meal prepping, she's eating the food throughout, then yeah. It's difficult not to, I guess you do have to taste your food sometimes, but how much, are, how much of it are you tasting? If this is something you're doing a lot and you're not losing weight, maybe uh, this is in general to anybody, if you're doing a lot of tasting when you're cooking, maybe you're like eating without knowing an actual whole meal. So try and avoid the tasting until the very end. On prep days, volumetric eating. Looks nice. Looks very Hello nice. Hello and welcome to the office floor. All right, so I skipped through some of the video because she was talking about some home organizing stuff and uh, I don't care about that. But I was like, these are awesome stripy pants. I want them on my body. The whole premise was just to use these as a mini goal. Like some. I do think this is a good idea. If you have a weight loss goal and again, going on uh, fat loss as a goal as opposed to weight loss being a goal, find some pants, some outfits that are a little bit snug on you or that are too small. And then, you know, as you progress through your journey, just try these outfits on. If they fit you, then you know you're losing weight or you're losing fat, I should say, even though the scale maybe doesn't show so. Something to aim toward fitting in, you know, but then I was having trouble losing weight and I never revisited Operation Clown. Well, the reason you were having trouble losing weight is because you wasn't really trying, huh? pants. So we are going to bring Operation Clown Pants back. It's going to be like a little short-term goal. Again, another form of measurement that is not the scale. And also there's like a little reward because I get to wear these awesome pants that probably no one else thinks is awesome. But best believe that if I could slide my snass hole right in there, I am going to be wearing these bad boys all the time. But on that notion, things that I'm going to be trying to do like a little bit more meticulously than the last stint of like on track that I had, I'm going to track my food using my fitness pal. I am on an SSR. Yeah, you do need to definitely track your food, weigh everything out, be consistent with that, be honest with yourself. Yes, yes. I, and I feel like it has kind of made it a little bit more difficult for me to lose weight. I also have PCOS. <laughs> uh, uh, excuses, PCOS. It makes it harder, not impossible. There's plenty of women with PCOS that lose weight. Uh, she's not losing weight because she's not consistent. She's not working out and she eats off track. That's what it is for the most part. 
The PCOS thing, it basically, they've done studies, it means that you just need to have a slightly harsher deficit. That's it. So if I need to be uh, on, say, like 2,000 calories to lose weight, if you have PCOS, you need to maybe be on like 1,700. You can still lose weight. It's very possible. There's plenty of women that have PCOS that lose weight. To, so to use that as an excuse is, uh, yeah, it's an excuse. Medication can make a difference, but usually the body does adapt. So, for example, I had to take some antibiotics a while ago, made me gain a bit of weight, made me hold some water. Within four to five days, my body regulated, adjusted to it. So, yeah, it can make it harder, not impossible. These are just excuses. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all there's plenty of people that are on all kinds of medications um, that have all kinds of health problems and they still lose weight it's all about being consistent and uh, sticking to the plan which she isn't by her own admissions you know so and like let's be real she doesn't have anything else to do in the day besides making some videos so there is no excuses really uh, so I kind of feel like I need to be a little bit more on top of things as far as like actually knowing like what I'm putting in my body I need to actually get hydrated. That's like a big thing for me. I do not drink enough water <laughs> Like how yeah water is very important. You know, you need to drink a lot of water I, I drink a lot of water, but at least drink four to five liters a day I would say for most people especially if you're working out how could like anything in my body work function properly if I'm not hydrating myself? Well, I guess that's it for this one So I just want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you on the next one. Bye Right, well, that's the end of that. We will see how successful she's going to be with this video. I'll be surprised. Um, I feel like, to be honest, my like I'm going to be honest, my patience is kind of wearing a bit thin with her as well. It could be, could be because I'm prep. Like, I like her. I like her content. I like how she presents herself. I like that she's on this, etc. But also, let's be real, she's been doing this for a long time. She has a lot of resources at hand. She gets a lot of views. She makes a lot of money doing YouTube. Um it's it's her only job so like what's the excuse really what is the excuse anyway on that note i'm gonna go into some vegetables comment like subscribe dislike the video if you disliked it let me know down below why i know she's a very popular person but also let's be real right like let's be real she's had a lot of chances and opportunities to 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 be more successful than what she is and blaming it on mental and to continuously put push the blame on mental health and health issues is like at some point take some accountability and just go like yeah i just don't stick to anything i like to eat and i don't track and i go off track a lot and i'm not consistent because that's basically what boils down to anyway i'm gonna go thank you so much and i'll see you next video bye guys